the Nawab told us of the impact of British colonialism through the eyes of an Indian ruler. When the British came to India, they found a system set up by the Mughals, which was difficult for them to understand. So, they eventually installed a system that better served their needs. Britain divided India into three territories called Presidencies, which were named Bengal, Madras and Bombay. Each Presidency was ruled by a Governor. The Governors were managed by a Governor-General. The first Governor-General was Warren Hastings, who tried to reform the justice system. A new system of justice was introduced in 1772. Under the new system, each district would have two courts. A criminal court known as a Fajdari Adalat and a civil court known as the Divani Adalat. The British appointed Malvis and Pandits to explain pre-existing Indian laws to European district collectors who presided over civil courts. The criminal courts still had a Qazi, who was a judge, and a Mufti, who would interpret the law. One of the main issues faced by the British was that the Pandits all understood the law differently based on their own interpretations of the Dharma Shastras. To deal with this challenge, the British appointed 11 Pandits in 1775 to compile a digest of Hindu laws. This digest was translated into English by N. B. Halhead. A code of Muslim laws was also compiled for the use of European judges. A new Supreme Court was established in Calcutta via the Regulating Act of 1773. A court of appeals called the Sadra Nizamat Adalat was also established. The new district collector, whose job it was to collect taxes and maintain the law, became the most important figure in British administration. The collectorate, as it was known, became the new centre of authority. The British began to reform the military too. The Mughal army was composed of cavalry soldiers, savars, and untrained infantry, paidal, made up of peasants from rural areas. The provinces of Awadh and Banaras changed things by training their paidal infantry in Tir Andazi or archery and sword fighting. The East India Company followed this practice when they recruited sepoys for their own army. By the 1820s, military technology changed the requirements of the East India Company. Wars fought by the British in Burma, Afghanistan and Egypt were being fought by infantrymen armed with muskets and matchlocks. So, the focus moved away from cavalry to infantry. By the early 19th century, the army had been regularized. Soldiers were trained using European methods, which began to influence their daily lives. The European desire to build a professional army outweighed caste and religious concerns. Over time, this created a lot of animosity amongst the soldiers towards the British. This animosity turned into revolt by 1857, as we will see later on. If you like this video and want to watch many, many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.